Now today I want to talk to you about how I edit my photography. I have a recent shoot lined up that I want to walk you through the editing process of and I think there's a few tips and tricks that you can use to help edit your images. Now before we dive in I just want to address that for me personally editing is more for final touch-ups rather than a complete overhaul of a photograph. I try not to rely on editing but instead try to capture the subjects as best I can while shooting rather than thinking oh it's fine I can fix it later which I think is quite a dangerous mindset to have because you can easily lose focus in the moment of what you're trying to capture and thinking about where the frame is and how you want to represent your subject. So for me I want my photos to represent reality truthfully. Now in terms of my editing software I use Adobe Lightroom for my workflow because I love the fact you can import a whole shoot into the library and see which photographs stand out. Uh, Lightroom also gives me a lot of creative control over how I edit my images. After using Lightroom, if I do need to make any other changes to my photos, for example removing dust, then I will import them into Photoshop. Now Lightroom does have a spot removal tool, but it doesn't give you as much control as Photoshop in terms of selection. So to give you guys a quick context of the work, this photo shoot is from a new project I'm working on at the moment inspired by the vast amount of new housing developments that are being constructed. And that really got me thinking about urban development and the ideas of the old and the new. And I came across an abandoned petrol station that looked like it was soon to be demolished. And after shooting it, it now has this metal construction fencing all the way around it, which sort of ruins the view, even though no one really pays attention to it. So I'm glad I photographed it when I did. So that's the top tip. If you see something interesting, take a picture. It's probably the most obvious tip in the world, but there we go. And I'm quite inspired by American culture, and that does influence my photography. I really love Ed Rush's 26 gasoline stations, not just in terms of the subjects, but being one of the first photo books, which I really love. So let's get into the editing process. The first thing I've done is imported my raw files into the library in Lightroom. Now I really love this because you can see all your images in one place. Lightroom also has a really handy feature that lets you set color labels for your images, which I've used to select my favorite images to edit. Now this is one of the images I want to talk about. And what I like about this is, as well as photographing the whole scene of the petrol station, I was interested in capturing the details as well. So I really like this with the car wheel trim. So the first thing I want to do is adjust the composition a little bit, crop it slightly there's a little bit too much extra space around the subject. Bringing it in around there I think it's quite nice. Now one other little tip you can do is with the background you can change the colour. So what I like to do is have white and black. So if I'm adjusting the highlights and the shadows it means I can match it to the background to make sure I've got the right tonal range. Now on the next thing is just have a look at the exposure. Bring that up a little bit. Probably 0.3. Uh, contrast will bring up 5, shadows I'm going to bring up a little bit, that means I can bring up the contrast a little bit as well, just trying to find the right balance of all these. Highlights I can bring up quite a fair amount, there isn't a huge amount of contrast at the bottom of the image. Clarity, vibrance and saturation, I normally just bring it up just a tiny little bit on each. So in terms of the, the colours, the green is the predominant colour here, it's quite a neutral palette. So I can bring the green up around sort of, I'll probably put about 25. So there's a reasonable amount, considering it's the only main color really. And then sharpening, I'll bring up from 25 to 30, just an extra five there. Makes things a little bit more sharp, but not too sharp. And then noise reduction, I'll bring up about 10. You use noise reduction normally in lower light conditions if you've got like a high SO and you want to reduce the noise, but in this case, the ISO is pretty fine, so I only needed a little bit there. And then we can create a snapshot as well to create sort of a copy of the image and the editing process we've done so far. And then if there's any changes we want to make, we can go back through the history and just go back if there's anything that we want to undo. So that is pretty much all the editing for that image. If we have a look at the before and after, we can see mostly it's the sort of just bringing out the exposure and bringing out the highlights to bring out sort of the car trim. And from the original import, it's mainly sort of the composition and bringing it in slightly. So that's the first one. So 
So this is the next image I want to talk about because I want to show you how the noise reduction works. We've, we've sort of underexposed this image a little bit, but the sky's, the sky's okay, but we, we, we want to bring out the details and the shadows here. So we're going to bring up the shadows by about 45. The highlights we can then bring down because the sky's still quite bright. Contrast will bring up five, exposure will bring up a little bit as well. Just got to be careful not to overexpose the sky. We can bring down the highlights and the whites to counter that. And then clarity, vibrant, saturation. Now we can see we've got a bit more detail here. If we zoom in and have a look, you can see that in the black here, there is a little bit more, you start to lose the quality of the image, but there's a little bit more sort of grain in there. So if we go down to the detail, then we have sharpening and noise reduction. The sharpening I'll normally bring up to about 30 and noise reduction, we can see the luminance here. If we bring it up to max, we can see that it greatly reduces the grain and sort of the noise in the image completely but it does make the image quite flat. So it starts at 25 default. If we bring it up to about 35, I reckon, maybe 40. And then that just reduces a little bit of the grain, which is quite nice. Because we had to shoot on a slightly higher ISO for that. And then bring the blacks up just a tiny bit, create a snapshot. So if we look at before and after for this one, you can see that we underexposed slightly we're able to adjust specifically the dark areas, the shadows and the blacks, bring them up, and then also go into the detail to get, try and get rid of some of the noise that's in the shadows as well. So I think that's a quite a successful edit. Now this is the next image I want to talk about because I took a couple of different shots of this structure and I just want to talk about the perspective and how that changes. So in this first image I shot from the waist so using the flip out screen on the 700D looking down at the camera photographing from there and then the second image I had the camera above my head with the flip out screen so shooting from above my head. So this difference in where you're shooting from as you can see creates quite a significant difference between the foreground and the background you can see the height of the buildings change and also the structure itself. In the first image here, there's a little bit of distortion where the, the beam sort of rises up and sort of falls away a little bit because this is further away from the camera and this bit's closer. Whereas in the second image, because you're higher up and shooting more towards the middle, it's a bit more face on and there's a bit more, le bit less distortion in the image, which I quite like. So this is definitely something worth thinking about perspective and thinking about how big the structure is that you're photographing, whether it's worth taking a few steps back, seeing if shooting from higher up towards the middle gives you a better vantage point rather than shooting from lower down, it might, or being closer to the subject, it might create a bit more distortion. So that's something that's worth bearing in mind. Now what I want to focus on in this is particularly the white balance and also the sort of the overexposed sky in the background. So the white balance colour at 5000. Now I was shooting in the golden hour, which was a much sort of warmer light, and I shot an auto white balance. So we're going to bring that up a little bit to about 50. Yeah, we'll bring it up to 5750, which looks a bit more not, a bit more how I remember it. And then we can bring back the blue with the colour control. So if we look at the exposure as well. You we can see bringing that up does affect the sky but then we can go ahead and bring the highlights down a little bit and also the whites. The whites have a bit more of a drastic effect. So we'll bring both of them down. That means the sky won't be as overexposed. Clarity, vibrance and saturation will bring up a little bit as well. And then we'll go ahead and find the blue, bring the saturation up a bit and bring the luminance down if we can. We'll bring it down to about 40. It does affect a few of the puddles in the foreground also, it means the pavement is not as blue as it was. So that looks a bit better. And then sharpening, bring it up to 30, noise reduction to 10, just to get rid of a tiny bit of grain. And then we'll bring, we'll bring up the reds and the greens as well, actually, of the sign to about 10, and then the greens as well to about 10. And create a snapshot. Now, in terms of the composition, you can see with the grid lines here, it's sloping a tiny bit to the right. So we're just going to rotate it 
a tiny amount to that there. And then we'll bring it in slightly as well. Gonna move it just a tiny bit. So you can play around very specific amounts here. So there we go. If we have a look at before and after, you can see how much of a difference changing the white balance has. Makes the pavement a lot more warmer and also recreates sort of what I saw with the golden hour. The colours also look a bit better and the blue is not as overexposed in the background. So I'm very happy with that image and how it's turned out. So in this next image, I've got a couple actually, which are a couple of my favourites from this shoot. I got one which is portrait, they're quite similar. And then this one which is a landscape, both have sort of the plant in them, the foreground and then the SO sign behind it. Landscape one, the signs in focus with the plant being out of focus. And then in the portrait one, it's reversed. So I got the plant in focus with a shallow depth of field with the SO sign behind it. Now we're going to edit the portrait one first and in terms of the white balance it's already at 5600 which is a bit more accurate than what I remember. So it's not too far off. We might bring it up to 59 and then we can always bring back the blue in the sky which is what I tend to do normally. Exposure is not too bad. I'll bring it up by 0.2 probably. Not too much because the sky is already quite bright. We'll try and bring it down a tiny bit just to retain some of the blue in the sky. We'll bring the whites down as well. And then clarity, vibrant, saturation. Just bring that up, just bump it up a tiny bit. And then we'll go ahead and have a look at, see what we can do with the blue. Bring it up five, and then luminance, we'll probably bring it down to about minus 20. Actually, maybe a bit less, probably minus 10. So it's reasonably, yeah, that's okay. Because now it's not as overexposed. Sharpening's quite nice, yeah. So we can zoom in really close if we want to have a look at the specifics. I love the depth of field in this image. I think that's what makes it really successful. So I'm happy with that. Noise reduction, bring it up to about 10. It doesn't need too much. If we go back to that. Next thing, I want to bring out the red just a touch, about five. Probably doesn't even need that. And the green, I'll bring up 10, just a tiny bit more. You can change the hue of the green to make it more yellow or more green. I'm going to lean a tiny bit more towards the green side, probably about five. Just a slight alteration there. In terms of composition, I quite like how it is already. I want to leave the space at the top where the SO sign is. Might bring it out just a tiny bit more. And then... Actually, I think I prefer how it was actually, because it removes a bit of the whatever that is in the, the foreground at the bottom. So we look at the before and after. Again, it's mostly the white balance again, and then trying to keep the blue in the sky, creating it a little bit more warmth again to try and recreate that golden hour, and then increasing the vibrancy and the saturation. You start to notice a pattern with my editing and how I edit the images. They're quite subtle, but it, it does make a difference. So looking at the landscape image, what I want to focus on is probably the white balance again and also have a look at the composition see if I can make any changes. So it's already at 6000 which is reasonably high. We'll bring it up a touch to 6250 and leave the tint as it is, that's pretty good. It doesn't look overly pink or green. And then next thing I want to look at actually is the highlights because this is very bright. Not too bad but we want to bring it down just a tiny bit. So I'm going to bring the whites down to compensate. Clarity, vibrance and saturation will bring up a touch. Shadows, I'm actually going to bring them down a tiny bit just to create a bit more contrast behind the sign. And then what we can do is, looking at the foliage as well, we're going to increase the luminance. we bring it all the way. Okay, it doesn't make a huge difference actually. we will probably put it about 40. And then saturation will bring it up a little bit. And then the SO sign as well. Bring up to five. Sharpening again, 30, and then luminance about noise reduction about 10. So I want to look at the composition of this actually because I've noticed that at the bottom of the frame there is this object here that I do want to remove. It is quite distracting. 
and also looking at the, the lines of the beams, they do look like they're sloping a little bit. And, what, and also this edge line of the edge of the station I want to have a look at. And what you can do is quite useful to line up the bottom of the frame with the object. So you can see it is sloping a little bit. You can see that the sky there it does get shorter. So it is sloping a little bit to the right. So we're going to go ahead and use the grids to adjust that. And also we're going to crop out that object at the bottom now. Somewhere around there. That looks like the right sort of rotation. Bring it maybe a touch more. Just so the gap, the, that line lines up. And then that gets rid of the object. I'll do a snapshot of that. And that looks a bit better now that it's rotated. So if we look at before and after. Again, we brought the white balance up a little bit. Brought out the colours and the red and the green mostly. A tiny bit more contrast as well in the roof. And then compositionally removing that object at the bottom, which was sort of in the frame. And also straightening sort of the horizon and where the, that line is. So that looks much better. And what I'm interested to know is if you guys prefer this landscape image or if you prefer the previous portrait image both of the foliage and the sign. So do you prefer this or this? I'm gonna leave a poll. I'd like to know what you guys think. Vote on which image you prefer. Interested to see what, what your opinion is. So let me know. Now I have a couple more images that I wanna talk about. Now next to the petrol station, it looks like there was an abandoned pub of some sort as there was a sign sticking out of the ground. Now I really like this image because it was, the shoot was inspired by American culture but it has the English flag so it gives it a context to its location which I really like. Now I've taken a different couple of perspectives of this subject. One was from a bit further back with more of this red railing included. And then the other image was a little bit closer to the sign with less of the red railing. So we're just gonna compare and edit both of these. So looking at this image first, I want to address the white balance a little bit because both of these were taken in the golden hours, the light was fading. And so I had to use a slightly higher ISO. And there's a little bit less contrast as well because the lack of light. So we're gonna look at the white balance, and just bump it up a tiny bit. Probably 6150, I think that's quite nice. And then exposure, it's not too far. We're gonna leave it as plus one, just a tiny little bit. We need to bring up the contrast a little bit because of the lack of light and contrast. Bring and touch the highlights up and bring the shadows down a little bit. And one thing I do wanna do is bring out the sort of the vibrancy and the light of the grass because it is quite dull at the moment. And this is where it, why I really love the color alteration in Lightroom because we can bring up the saturation, also bringing up the luminance. You can see the difference that makes and just affecting the grass alone and it still looks really natural. So just bringing it up a little bit can make quite a significant change. Bring up the 35 and that will help make the image look a bit more vibrant. I bring a bit more light to the bottom of the frame, which I think is what's needed to contrast to the red. We're gonna bump the red up a little bit as well whilst we're here. And then I'm gonna bump the clarity up a tiny bit to five, as well as the vibrance and saturation a tiny bit. And then also we're gonna bring the blue up a little bit as well in the sky. Compositionally, I think this looks really nice. I might try and crop it just a tiny bit, just to this edge of this tree, I think. Trying to create a balance between the top of the sign and then the bottom. So always what I try and do is look around the edges of the frame to see how that looks. Yeah, so I'm quite happy with that. So we make a snapshot. Look at the before and after. So there's not a huge amount of alteration with this image. It's mostly the white balance, but then also at the bottom, I'm bringing up the 
bringing out the light in the grass at the bottom, bringing up the saturation that looks a lot nicer. And also the, the sky and then also bringing up the sign a little bit as well. So that's that image. Now this is the second image of the pub sign. And I think this image requires a little bit more work than the other one, especially compositionally, because there's a lot of negative space around the subject. So we're gonna have to crop in a little bit. Now I'm gonna crop just inside of this railing here, which I think will work quite nicely. And again, looking at the space above the sign and then below this red railing here to try and create an equal amount of space to create a balanced sort of composition. It's about there, I think it looks quite good. Now again, we're gonna have to look at the white balance because of the fading light and also the contrast as well. Gonna bump the white balance up to 6100 and bring exposure up a touch and then contrast. You might bring the contrast up to 10 actually. Give it a bit more. And then highlights we can bring up. The image is quite flat to be honest because of the lack of contrast. So I'm gonna bump the whites up, blacks down, shadows down, shadows minus five. And then we're gonna look at the individual colors next. So the blue we're gonna bring up a little bit. Again, it's a very sort of overcast day, which is quite typical for England. So we'll try and bring a little bit of the blue back. And then again, the green, I wanna bring the green in the foreground and the background up a little bit. To try and make it a little bit lighter as well. And then the red, bring out the red in the sign, especially this railing, because I think that's quite important to the composition. And then clarity, vibrant saturation, bring up five. Sharpness, we're gonna bring up the 30. And then luminance, normally we'll go 10, but we're gonna go 15, just because we had to shoot at a slight, slightly higher ISO because of the lack of light. And that will just remove some of the noise and the grain from the shadows and the trees. So if we do a before and after, compared to the imported image, we've done a lot compositionally. Just bringing it to the inside of that railing helps frame the sign a bit better and then going back to that there we go the colors also look a bit better with the white balance tiny bit more warmer bringing the vibrancy back in as well so i'm quite happy with that edit as well now trying to compare these two images and pick my favorites actually proving to be quite difficult I really like the railing in this red one and also it doesn't ha it has more of a minimalistic background which is quite nice whereas compared to this one the signs a bit more prominent in the foreground and it still has the red railing and it has a bit more vibrancy in the grass which I quite like and also the car is sort of a nice detail although for some it might be distracting um, so these are the two images I'm going to put another poll up so I'd like you to vote which image is your favourite of these two like pub signs? Let me know your opinion. I'd be really interested to see which one you guys prefer. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below or send me a message on Instagram. My Instagram is lewismorephoto. I'll leave links for my Instagram and my website in the description. If you want to see more of my work, feel free to go check them out. If you haven't already, vote for your favourite images in the polls. I'm really interested to see what you guys think. I hope you've learnt something from my editing process. That's all for today's video. Take care and God bless.